Hello, this is Mark Hubs with Eris Gone Bullet Molds. Today I'm going to try to show you how to pr uh, produce uh, combustible cartridges with the Cliff Manley cartridge former. And this is a two piece operation with a mandrel and a counter die. And I found it's very easy and also very effective in forming the envelope uh, for the cartridge and also uh, allowing it to be packed down very tight to get a good firm cartridge. You'll need several things for this operation besides uh, the former. You'll need a heeled bullet. And these are our own make uh, from our, our bullet modes. This is the Johnston and Dow 44 caliber conical bullet. Uh, that company made about, uh, about 10 million of these for the U.S. government during the Civil War. Uh, this particular one I chose to reproduce because it has a very long heel on it, which allows it to sit deep into the chamber of the revolver and thus it works on uh, m many more of the current reproductions that are available today. Uh, the reproductions unfortunately have different dimensions in the loading area than the originals and it doesn't allow them to take a long bulky bullet. But the Johnson & Dow, although being a, it's also a, just a good design, uh, is more compatible with most of the reproduction revolvers. The long heel also allows it to, atta uh, to attach a paper cartridge. And these were uh, uh, produced that way during the war uh, with a combustible cartridge made out of skin. Now we'll be making one out of paper today. You also need uh, papers. And people use many different things. Uh, rolling papers, curling papers I should say, uh, cigarette rolling papers. Uh, I got this idea from a fellow on uh, the Black Powder Revolver Enthusiast Facebook page. Uh, he uses coffee filters, and they've been nitrated, soaked in potassium nitrate. I chose the brown uh, version because it's more in keeping with the colors of the paper that was used at the time. You'll need the uh, paper for the main envelope, and then a disc to seal the bottom, and these are cut to the, about the size of a nickel. And you'll see how these work as we go along. You'll also need some glue. Uh, you can use just about anything. I use... Uh, this clear gel tacky glue. Uh, you can use Elmer's. Uh, I've seen people even use Elmer's wood glue. Just, uh, the main thing is just use it very sparingly. Uh, you, don't, you don't want too much uh, because it won't combust as well as the paper and also it may stick inside the reformer if you use too much, too much glue. And you'll need something to apply it. I just put it on a uh, piece of aluminum foil with a uh, toothpick and it works fine. Before we get started, we're going to wax up our former. You can use beeswax or paraffin, and this just makes sure there's a uh, good coating of wax on the wood, which makes uh, less chance for that paper and glue to stick to the former. Okay, we'll take uh, one of our papers, uh, put a little glue out, just a dab of do ya. I put just a touch along that edge. I wrap it around the mandrel. Make sure it's good and tight. Press it down. And then insert it into the former and twist it a few times lightly. And that will make sure that it's uh, completely formed around the mandrel. Then I very gently take it off and lay it aside to dry. Now for the bottom, uh, after these have all dried, come back and uh, take one of the bottoms, the bottom discs, take a dried envelope and put it back onto the former, or to the manual I should say. Then take a little bit of glue and just go around the outside very lightly. And next, center your disc over the hole in the, the former and just press in. And again, give it a few turns. You may want to have a hard surface that you can hit it on. Press it in tight. You want the bottom to come up flush with the, uh, with the bottom of the block. 
and then gently remove it off of the mandrel and set it aside to dry. Now I have to mention here also that this block is cut for 25 grains. The thickness of the block decides how much of, uh, of powder charge will fit inside. And when, when I trim this in a minute, you'll see more. Uh, the, the ordinance manual of the period suggested 26 grains for a 44 caliber cartridge. And that's probably what came out of the federal arsenals. The contractors varied. Uh, Colt was as low as 18 grains. And uh, we found references also to as high as 35 grains. But I think the average was about 25 to 26 grains, as the ordinance manual suggested. The 35 grainers, I'm, I'm just really curious if they were truly for a uh, Model 1860 or, or a Remington New Army, because you just can't fit that much uh, powder and a long bullet into the chamber. Uh, maybe those were for Dragoons, uh, the earlier revolver, issue revolver, don't know. But what I'm getting from most folks who have uh, been shooting combustible cartridges made with the Johnson and Dow bullet, uh, 25 grains is about the maximum amount that you can get into the chamber underneath the bullet. And that sounds about right according to the ordinance manual. Now we're going to put this back onto the mandrel for just a moment and uh, reinsert it. And there's a little groove around the mandrel just at the right height. And we're going to take a pocket knife, a good sharp pocket knife, and cut all the way around into that groove, peel off the excess, I'll try to do this without hurting myself if there's a knife, and then we'll take it back out, and that will give you a perfectly length, a perfect length every time uh, you make an envelope. And as I said, these are cut for uh, 25 grains. And the next, uh, after I make up some of these and let them dry, we'll charge them and insert the bullet. Okay, now it's time to charge the cartridges. So what I do, I take the previously constructed envelope and I put it back into the counter die. Let that drop back in there. So cooperate with me. And just push it down lightly. You want maybe just a tiny bit sticking up over the top. And then I charge it with the powder. 
and I weigh my charges. Uh, you can measure, I assume, but it's very critical that you get the correct amount. And uh, cause a couple of reasons. First of all, it's consistency and accuracy, but also the the envelope is is made for a specific amount. If you don't have enough powder, uh, it won't pack tight, and the uh, envelope will push up over the uh, heel onto the bullet itself. You want it to stay on the heel. If you have too much uh, for this envelope, then it won't have enough uh, on the heel. It'll keep it from going all the way up and attaching secure. I said this one's cut for 24, 25 grains. I've found that actually uh, it's better, this particular one is better with about 24. It seems to fit the the amount and the, and the, the bullet better. So now I take uh, a little bit of glue and I put it around the heel of the bullet. And insert it into the envelope. And if it, everything goes right, I can press it down and actually hear it almost crunch a little bit as the powder compacts. Okay, you look on the bottom, it should be flush. The cartridge envelopes now should be very firm to the touch. And now I'll push it back out using the mandrel. And you'll hear it sort of pop when it comes loose. And there you have the completed cartridge. Now if you look at this one, you'll see that I actually uh, folded the edge under a little bit when I put the bullet in. As long as, a, as long as the cartridge stays on there, that's, that's not a big deal. But, the, but realistically, you want the paper to come up right to the bottom of the drive band, which is that band right underneath the groove. But the, the cartridge is firm to the touch. It, you, it shouldn't feel mushy. That means the powder is good and compressed. And we'll lay those aside and let them dry.